biggest bands of the early 70s was Led Zeppelin, a British group generally credited with creating what we now know as heavy metal. The band broke up after the death of drummer John Bonham. That's when lead singer Robert Plant went his separate way. Today, music correspondent Rona Elliott says Plant is eight years into his successful solo career now and finally willing to talk about those days with Led Zeppelin. Good morning, Rona. Good morning, Brian. Robert Plant was the golden-haired lead singer of Led Zeppelin and has always been considered one of rock's foremost sex symbols. With the release this week of his fourth album, Now and Zen, he proved his solo staying power. In London, proved his solo staying power. In London, I asked him why he is willing to talk about those Led Zeppelin days now. It's now time to stop kind of denying your past with Led Zeppelin. So what happened? Well, I just figured that they were real powerful songs. And if you avoid the real traps, material-wise, and some of the songs that I don't want to associate myself with, then maybe people ought to be able to have a good time and go, yeah, well, good old Plenty, you can still sing those songs. What happened is that the kind of awareness of Led Zeppelin being so powerful at right now, everywhere, and me wandering around like some kind of out-of-control inverted snowplow, denying all knowledge and, and casting aside everybody's hopes and dreams, seems to me to be a pretty selfish and stupid reaction. So you're willing when you go on tour to play some of the songs? If I feel like it. Mm. There's no reason why not, so long as they're not the songs that drive me crazy. Okay, mm. the song that drives you crazy, which remains uh, the most requested song on American FM radio, which is Stairway to Heaven. What do you think is so powerful about that song that it just lurks around like this? Well, I think it's, it's ambiguity. Uh, it it's, has a quality, an epithet quality, and a quality of kind of, a, of the abstract. It's also very sincere. You know, it's written and recorded in the most sincerest of attitudes. You get married to it, make love to it if you dare. You know, for that length of time, you know. But uh, to actually have it as a millstone around my neck, I don't, I don't think that I've got it. I enjoy it, the song, but I can't be held responsible for it nightly. Let's explore a little more territory about it. How was that whole experience for you, the Live Aid experience? It surely must be the occasion to, to, mm -hmm. to actually do it for the right reasons, you know? It worked perfectly, but really the machine could have done with a good overhaul before it actually went out there. After the end of Led Zeppelin, you had described yourself as somebody who really wanted to invent them, reinvent themselves for a solo career, and you did it successfully, which a lot of other people had not been successful at doing in similar situations. Why do you think you were successful? Because I'm obsessed. <laughs> I mean, I'm really determined. Uh, I think, like everything else that you touch on in life, you have to uh, decide how intensely you really want this thing and whether or not it's worth getting up to do it. And uh, getting up in every respect. Uh, and I was more than convinced that when I was 31, that shouldn't be the end of my career. I started making records when I was 16, and, and so I was 20 when I f was part of Led Zeppelin, and I couldn't see there any reason to stop. But I knew that I was young enough, and agitated enough, and ambitious enough to make it on my own terms. Describe to me a little bit the atmosphere that you wanted to create on this record? Well, I wanted to almost, it's like I've done my penance now, you know, and I don't, all the Hail Marys have now been done, and uh, I'm not going to put my finger in the pie anymore. So here is what you get after you've finished the whole kind of self-analysis process. This is as straightforward and as bouncy as you're going to get from me. I mean, it might get even more bouncy, but if it does, then I'll join the monkeys. I like to think that that what I do sounds contemporary, but it contains the mood and the venom and the, the sex that always was part of what I do. And that's the only reason that people will hang on, because of that, you know? I mean, if you churn it out just for the hell of it, you've got no right to expect anybody's allegiance. 